What's up fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tank's bringing it to you as the M-O-S-S-E-S -S -S man. M-O-S-S-E-S -S -S man. M-O-S-S-E-S -S -S man. Here I am. Here I am. The Moss's man. That is a Wu-Tang Method Man throwback. I don't even know if Moss's is a word. Listen, I can't bring it to you better than being a 40, yes, 40 year old man, white dude in a minivan, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. If you can't tell, I'm doing well. I want to talk about Moss's Witch. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about Moss's for Beginners. We're going to talk about Billy Beginner. We're going to talk about Poly Pro and all kinds of different Moss's on this M-O-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E man. Here I am. Here I am, the Mosses man. Mosses. When you talk about moss, you got to take it right back to rule one. Rule one, what would Mother Nature do? When you think about mosses, where are moss? Mosses? I don't know mosses' word. Where is moss found in nature? It's found at the edge of creek beds. It's found in moist areas. It's not found in full sun. It's not found in fast moving water. Maybe some exceptions there. It's found in like cold, kind of little bit of shade action on the sides of cliffs down low. It's found at the edges of trees, around rocks. Mosses, folks. Mosses. I love moss. The catalyst for this video is because we have been growing the heck out of moss with one of the benefits I'm going to tell you here in a second. Let's talk about Billy Beginner. Everybody wants a carpet. You want a carpet? Look, you could grow Java moss in your toilet. And oh, by the way, the ones we're about to show you are just about as easy. Moss super forgiving legend has it you can rub java moss on a piece of driftwood and that piece of driftwood can be set outside dried out and a year later the moss will grow i would love to get your comments on if you actually know if that's true or not i heard it is but you can just leave moss and it'll grow forever billy beginner wants a carpet bam lay down some moss it grows easy it can grow in cold water which is actually how we're growing here moss does not like high temps it can handle high light but it does not like high temperatures we can grow it here in greenhouse 2.0 in its individual 33 longs we take those 33 longs in the summer it actually gets a little too hot and we have to shade it off but they grow in full sun as long as the temps are low i found it actually grows pretty well below 70. You can get down like 65 if you want, even down into 60 and it'll be just fine. Let's talk about some of the benefits of keeping moss before we talk about the downside. One of the benefits of moss, one of the great things about moss is this. You can use moss when you're rearing, breeding fish, or keeping, raising fry. Yes, moss makes a fantastic hiding place for fish to get busy. It makes a fantastic hiding place for shrimp of all kinds. Shrimp actually like to little take their little things and eat off of the moss as well. And then if you actually do have fry, I don't know if they actually eat off the actual moss itself or the little tiny microorganisms that love to live in moss. But regardless, you're going to do pretty well if you have your fry and you have a nice little layer of moss somewhere in the tank with them. Another great thing about moss is if you want to go into Poly Pro, you can actually take moss and you can glue it onto driftwood, you can tie it to a rock, you can tie it in a bow, you can throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier. How's your moss hang low? Sorry. Yeah, the moss loves it, man. The moss can be tied to stuff glued to a rock. I actually prefer to tie it because it will attach and if you glue it you'll get the little white chunks or whatever around. It doesn't look quite as good versus if you actually tie it. Shout out to George Farmer. I think he made a moss uh, yogurt mix where you can smear it on. So I'm all about mosses. It's Sunday. It's M-O-S-S-E-S -S -S -E man Sunday. Gotta show you a bunch of different species of moss we got brewing. Taiwan moss. Guess where it's from? Longer fronds less fronds per inch if you will this would be a great moss for like a tree if you wanted longer looking branches tall taiwan moss think taiwan think tall think longer fronds next up flame moss similar to a taiwan moss longer fronds but then it has these little centimeter long flames if you will that come off of it flame moss would be great on long branches because the frond could attach to it and you have these little flames coming off of it love me some flame moss let santa bring you some christmas moss christmas moss way more dense fronds 
looks like a little bit of a Christmas tree. Unlike flame moss and Taiwan moss, a much more dense pattern to it that kind of goes up to the point like a Christmas tree. Spiky moss. Think of it as in between flame moss and Christmas moss. Similar pattern to Christmas moss, but not quite as dense. The fronds are a little more spread out, a little more spiky, though it does have that similar point to a Christmas, just less dense than a Christmas moss. Peacock moss. Looks one heck of a lot like Christmas moss, but not quite as much of a pointy pattern, but a super dense fronds on it. Peacock moss. And last but not least, the M-O-S-S-E-S man bringing you the Tacalian stallion of moss. It's talking about Physidens fontanellus. Looks completely different than all the vesicularia-based mosses we just showed you. This stuff is native to the United States, can handle the cold, can handle the abuse. And as a rough, rugged moss, I would definitely try this out with all kinds of different critters that are known to eat plants because this plant can handle the abuse. Physidens bringing it to you on an M-O-S-S-E-S man Sunday, baby. <laughs>